computers, you can order it right over the computer. Uh, CD Now carries it and Amazon.com. And the publisher, Pitbull Publishing, has a website. You could order it direct from the publisher. Okay. And it comes with a bonus disc for computer users. Can I rattle off the uh, Internet address? Yeah, sure, there? go I ahead. I got to do commercials. That's right, go ahead, go ahead. All right, and if you didn't get that, uh, this is very easy to remember. Kissbook at AOL.com. You can email, mm -hmm. and, and uh, the publisher will send you information on uh, where to find the book or if you want to order it directly over the, over the Internet. Yeah, we'll keep those in the studio here for folks who can't write that down, too. Hey, Gordon, hang on, and we'll be right back to you, okay? We got it. All right. All right, Gordon Gebert will be back with us. More stories from Kiss. Uh, from the days of Kiss and post days of Kiss with Ace Freely, and uh, throw some more stuff on from uh, my, one of my favorite Kiss albums of all time, Destroyer, the one that came oh, out yeah. right after that first live album. I got a few particular stories I want to ask Gordon about. Yeah. One of them being Steven Tyler's mom slipping Ace the tongue backstage one night. <laughs> I missed that Steven part Tyler's of Tyler's mother <laughs> slipping Ace, according to Ace. We'll talk about that wow. a little bit. And Ace saying, "This is great." Ninety-three point three KDKB. It's nine oh four. We have on the phone with us uh, Gordon Gebert, who has written the book "Kiss and Tell." It's kind of the inside story of the Kiss years with the original band. At I'll least. tell you what, I couldn't put it down yesterday. Yeah, I, was, I didn't get all the way through it, but I damn near did in one day. You know what? I, we got to get to the story about Stephen Tyler's mom. Oh right? yeah, yeah, Gordon. Hey, Gordon. Yeah. Um, let me ask you a question here. Um, what about people who say, "Hey, you're you're just screw you, you know you're screwing these guys and you're stabbing them stabbing them in the back for the money of that you're going to make off the book." Yeah, well, I always come. I didn't start off my interview uh, the, the way I always do. I, <laughs> I really dislike people that write tell-all books, the Kitty Kellys and the Elvis Hangarons, and the, those are the people cashing in. Now, now, aren't you in that boat now? Yeah, I'm in that boat right now. But there's a, a, a very big reason why the book got written. Uh, Ace and I were in uh, business together, and um, he st basically stole the business. And it's still in litigation, and I really can't comment that much on it uh, because of the lawsuit and everything. But um, what Ace did, to that, that's not even reason enough. My, my, uh, you know, fighting over money with personal friends and stuff is not a reason to write a book. What Ace did was he pointed fingers at me publicly right. to rally his fans around him, uh, to uh, stop my lawsuits and stuff like that, and said that I embezzled and stole money from him. Right, wrote a letter. And he falsely accused me of this. Right, I actually wrote a letter to the fan club naming yeah, you as the guy who was behind all and that. And he was the one who made my fight with him public. So when, once he made it public, I, I mean, I had no recourse. Uh, I actually started writing a letter back to the fans, and I said, it, it got ridiculous. So the letter turned into a book. Okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> okay, yeah, because it's a. Uh... It, it, there is definitely some juicy stories in there, and Ace does not come out looking too good the whole time. Um, in fact, I, Peter Chris doesn't look too good either a lot of times. And I, I'd say that Gene and Paul, like you said, um, they come off at least as professional. Oh, uh, they're very professional. Yeah. They're incredibly professional. I mean, I've worked with a lot of. I mean, I've worked with a lot of rock stars. I mean, it's not just Ace. I mean, we Ace and I were best friends, and uh, we were really tight buddies for a long time. But I've worked on, on a lot of other projects and bands, and I'm a professional keyboard player here in New York. So, uh, like I said, I always I was always asked all these zany. Tell us a crazy story about Ace because he has <laughs> such a crazy <laughs> reputation in New York. Well, right. well, well deserved too. Right. But you know, it was, I thought it was interesting in that the the press <laughs> kit uh, that came along with your book actually quoted Gene Simmons as saying, "I found the book very interesting." That was all he said about it. But he said he found it very interesting. Well, that's Gene's way of saying. Uh, he loved the book. He can't okay. comment. He can't come out and say, you know, that book is great. This he has to work with Ace. Right, right. <laughs> so he can't give his, you know, endorsement to the book. But I think that's his way of saying, you know, secretly uh, saying, uh, you know, that, that book really nailed Ace. I mean, I, we have mutual friends, and I've had friends call me up and say, Gene thought the book was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's an unbelievable book, and you don't even have to be a Kiss fan to like it. It's just it's amazing, an amazing, uh, you know, can you think back to that 70s rock and roll star lifestyle, and those guys were living it to the hilt. At least uh, Ace and Peter were, for sure. But now, one of the stories that we mentioned in the book, uh, before we went to break there, was Ace claiming that uh, one time backstage, Steven Tyler's mom slipped him the tongue. <laughs> <laughs> now, did that really happen? Yeah, he claims that. I wasn't <laughs> there when it happened. Um, we were good friends with Aerosmith. Uh, I was friends with Joe Perry uh, during his drug years, so I don't even know if he even remembers me. But um, 
<laughs> yeah, back then it was insane, and and Steven Tyler's mother was a little crazy uh, on the crazy side. So <laughs> it could be true. I don't know. But I mean, Ace claimed that all the time that that when he went to kiss Steven Tyler's mother, she slipped him the tongue. I mean, I know what Steven Tyler looks like, and to think of his mom is kind of a scary thought. I think, and that, <laughs> Ace, that could be pretty rough. Is hot though, you oh, gotta okay. admit. <laughs> right, his daughter, <laughs> for sure. Now Ace kind of kind of fancied himself as a bit of a comedian. You kind of refer to that a couple of times in the books that he would tell horrible jokes and and really not tell them very well, and and the kind of the cling would always yuck it up and, and sort of they become in the inner circle. And you also mentioned uh, the show Fridays uh -huh. and the fact that Michael Richards, then kind of unknown, the guy who plays Kramer right now, but he was a regular on the show, and Michael Richards kind of thought Ace was, was sort of like the biggest idiot on the planet. Oh, yeah. The it, it, Bob was there for that, and he, he told me the whole story. They, were, they flew out to California because Kiss was uh, doing a, a live appearance on Fridays. That right. was a cool show. And yeah. I, I always noticed Michael Richards on that show. He used to do stuff with Raw Chickens. Comedian. Yeah. And they they had to hang out that whole week, and he thought Ace was Ace was drunk the whole week, and he and he was very obnoxious and and got drunk and talked in people's faces and and spit on you when he talked to you when he got sloppy. So <laughs> yeah. so Michael Richards really couldn't hack him after a whole week with Ace. You you even theorized that yeah, I love uh, this. You, you theorized that th there's an episode of Seinfeld where Judge Reinhold plays a close talker, a guy who gets right in your face constantly, and you thought that maybe that Michael Richards got the idea from Ace. I, I, I really think so. <laughs> that is, it's funny. And that, and that show, just for people who don't know, it was kind of a, it was a ripoff on Saturday Night Live, although they did have some talented people on there. And that was in, uh, what was it, 81, that appearance? And that was like the lean period for Kiss right in there. Yeah, that was, that was the end of, I don't know, if it was 80, 81. That was when the, uh, Ace was on his way out. Right. And, uh, and they were doing this appearance on, on the show. So, I mean, the things were not well with the band. Right. And they were always competing with, with girls, you know, who could get the big bigger celebrity and this and that it was and it was a lot of immature stuff and you got to remember what years they were and, and you know how old these guys were and well, and they're rock and rollers so it, yeah. rock and rollers do a lot of immature stuff so well, it's, it's real life spinal tap that's what it is <laughs> now i'll tell you what we'll play another kiss tune here when we come back um why don't you tell us um about some of the uh, as far as celebrity girlfriends gene simmons definitely won that Derby, right? Yeah, he won that. Yeah, yeah. he won that contest. He won, that, he won that one, going away. Uh, but uh, we'll talk about some of the uh, the recollections uh, in the book regarding Diana Ross when she was a uh, girlfriend of Gene Simmons and Cher, who was oh, also okay. another legendary girlfriend. Right. Also, we got to talk Gene about Simmons. the crazy glue room at some point. Oh, that that's an in insane story. Yeah, we'll we'll get into that. Hey, can you hang? Yeah, you All got right, great. It. All right, right, Gordon, hang on with us. Gordon Gebert uh, has written the book Kiss and Tell, all about the band Kiss. And uh, if you got some questions, 260-9393, sure. we'll, we'll try and get them along to Gordon. But let's do another one from the Destroyer album. And again, a tune you probably haven't heard on the radio in years. I uh, love this one when I first heard it. Back when this album came out, 1976 was the year this followed up the live album. This is Shout It Out Loud. 93.3 KDKB. You got Arizona's album rock station. <laughs> Ninety-three point three KDKB, Arizona's album rock station. That's a great one from the Destroyer album. Shout it out loud! Yeah, you got to have a party. <laughs> the overriding message in that one. I had, I had some so many friends who were into the Grateful Dead, and they used to hear Kiss, and they're like, oh, "Man, that's terrible." But I think they missed the point. But, uh, quite just, possibly. Just about you know, quite just about possibly having a good time. The attitude was attitude was a big part of it. Yeah. All right. Now let's go back to the phone. Uh, yeah. We have uh, excuse me. We have Gordon Gebert on with us, who's written this Kiss and Tell. Uh, the book is called Kiss and Tell, and I guess it's it's kind of one of those Kiss and Tell books all about the band Kiss. Who, uh, uh, Gordon, you you would tell us that uh, Kiss did rock and roll all night, except uh, Gene Simmons and Paul Stanley didn't really party every day. <laughs> uh, they were they were the saner of the of the four, <laughs> and, and straight too. But you know, no no drinking or or booze really. Uh, or Gene drugs. never drank. I mean, he. I think uh, Bob mentions only one incident that he peer pressured him into having a beer, and uh -huh. and, that, and that was 